going to try something new today. I am getting ready to interview a friend, Leonard Lowe, who I probably said his last name wrong. Wow. He is incredible. I got to interview him just a few months ago and the conversation was so powerful. I'm like, you got to come back. He's just an awesome guy. And I think he's got a brand new course or book that's coming out. Um, but this guy is awesome. Uh, I got so much out of our last interview. And so you should check out a, uh, I think it's a conversation with Joshua T. Bartlin and Leonard Lau. Here he is. Um, I don't know if it was a world's mayor experience. I, I, I've done so many shows. I forgot what, <laughs> which interview I had him on, but he's awesome. And here he is joining right now. I got to admit it. But <laughs> setting this up, doing this so much different. This is conversations with Joshua T. Berglund, and I sure hope I let him in. Um, where's he at? I let him in, I thought. Well, dead gummit. <laughs> I know he's messaging me now. You know, I love it when I try new things and it doesn't work. Um <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, we are live, brother. <laughs> hey, Joshua. I tried something new today where I'm live and recording before you jump on. So I didn't do a pre recorded pre record of an sure. intro. So you just walked right into me talking. So I'm so grateful to have you here. How you doing, man? I'm cool, man. And you? It's good, it's good to see you again. Where are you at now? <clears throat> I'm back in Scarborough, in uh, south of Cape Town, in South Africa. I was okay. away for four. Yeah, I was four months in Europe, uh, How, but back here. When did you get back? Uh, about a week ago, Joshua. How, so, how's the adjustment being back home? Uh, I tell you, it's 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 super nice to be back. No, it's super cool to be back. Very oh, cool. It's been. Uh, yeah, no, it's it was not. It was great being overseas, but uh, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool to be back. Well, it's good to see you. And I, I was just sharing that how much I forgot what show you were on. I just it was only a couple months ago, and I, I always try new things and change things up and start new mm -hmm. platforms. So I forgot where I actually interviewed you, but I remember it being so special that I invited you back and I wanted you to come back because I love what you're about. I love what you represent because in my eyes, the truth and the message that you deliver brings healing. And, and it, it, you create a safe place for men to talk about sex and sexuality, not in a locker room perverted sense, but in a very healthy, mature way. Yet at the same time, not being restricted by religion and old school beliefs and old school philosophies of one man, one woman, you know, monogamy, any of those things like you, you have a very healthy <coughs> attitude and approach towards sexuality. And that is needed with men because I think with men, and I could be wrong here, and I want you to comment on this, mm -hmm. but with men, we are taught boobs, ass, uh, sex on TV, locker room talk, crude talk, um, objectifying of women, objectifying of, of even sexuality, because even in the gay bisexual community, there's a sense of well, perverting sexuality instead of looking at it from this sacred, beautiful, powerful place that it really is. So I want to commend you for that, but I would love your thoughts on what I just said. Yes, no, that's that's I'm super passionate about that, you know, for men to sit in a circle or sit in, you know, in a video Zoom call circle <laughs> and be able to express what they, you know, feel deep inside and share ideas and share experiences and ex share their vulnerability. Uh, there aren't many spaces for that. And I find that it's just super amazing the moment you create that space. And I do that to that 21 day journey of mine. That one is actually starting now, 8 November, very soon. And uh, yeah, so we have four Zoom calls, and then we sit and the guys sit and we, uh, you know, like go through the discussions. And it's amazing the learnings, you know, that comes out of that. Um, because, you know, it's, it's 
there's so much fear, guilt, and shame around sexuality. And at the moment you start talking about it and sharing, then all of the stuff come up. Um, yeah, and there's so much about lovemaking and and sex that we don't know about, that no one has ever taught us about, you know. Um, Why is I'll, that? I don't know. I was I was actually driving on you know, the way driving you thinking about it, uh, Joshua. It's that you know, you, you learn algebra at school and you know, you learn how to play rugby and soccer and basketball and you know, so but no one ever taught teaches you about lovemaking which is, I find, super fascinating. And when you start talking about putting stuff together and say, how can I get men to uh, drop deeper into their, their, their lovemaking potential, and people are like, wow, that's interesting. You know, why would you need learning about that? But, but, but you do, like with any, any skill, like with any, you know, art. You know, you, you need a bit of practice and you need to, to, to learn a few basic things. And... I think the reason to answer your question, I think there's so much guilt, shame, and fear around sexuality that has been totally suppressed and that hasn't come out really. Um, it's not, it wasn't comfortable for people to talk about it, but I think that's changing luckily now. It is. And, and, and technology has played a huge role in that because it's given, now mind you, there's it's given microphones and it's given people the power to have a voice and independent media is on a rise. And of course, now any idiot with a microphone can say whatever they think and some people will assume it's fact. That's one downside about it. But at the same time, people were able to communicate their messages based off of what they feel is right. So the information is out there to find a like-minded tribe. And in our last conversation, I told you about you know, my past and the struggles with not just my sexuality, but just the, the well, I mean, the consequences of being molested and, and then learning to lie and the fear and then growing up in a religious uh, household and being in the church and being very ingrained in that world. Mm. My, my relationship with sex and sexuality was just, is, was brutal. And I'm 44 years mm. old now. And really, I got to be honest with you, man, it was the start, it was after our interview that for me, the motion of healing really started to accelerate because even up until that point, it was still very uncomfortable for me. Uh, I was trying to heal, I was trying to grow. And even though I had, I didn't really have peace. And it was after our interview that things really started to accelerate where I was finding peace. But now what's I'm what is happening is I'm starting to meet a lot of other people, especially men that have real and I thought I was bad. <laughs> I'm meeting more and more men that have this very unhealthy relationship with sex and it all centers around their fear about being honest. That's whether they are mm. a cheater, whether it's a desire that they have that they're afraid to share with their wife, so then they're going to hookers, mm. whether or or they're looking on apps, they're seeking elsewhere, they're seeking through porn. Like sure. these sure. things are very, very dangerous. I want to, I want you like, I would like for you to comment on the importance of truth around sexuality for men specifically, and get into the why it matters. Like you know, the the consequences side of it of our <clears throat> and some of the things that you've learned in your professional career being really kind of a, a true educator in this field. Yeah, no, it's super important to be authentic with about your desires. And it is super important to also have awareness of your body. Um, and the one thing that's almost the first thing that's jumping up for me here now is that so many men don't uh, realize, and men, women also, that just the just talking about lovemaking, that when they, that ejaculation and orgasm, for example, are two different things. And I just talk quickly, briefly about that. It's that, you know, once you start realizing that and you, and you learn that you can split this and then you can learn you can make love for a longer period of time and you can become multi-orgasmic as a man, then all that, that reality starts kicking in. And, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So that's why it's important, I think, for 
for us to share this 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 information you know because most people don't know about it and that's why it's important for men to talk with each other about it because you know a lot of it is is, is similar um so yeah i think it's it's vital how how do men become multi-orgasmic Yes, you know, so so we always hear the thing that but women are multi-orgasmic and then as if men aren't and, and it's, it's absolutely uh, not true. Uh, so men can become multi-orgasmic by learning to, to breathe energy up in their bodies. So when you get to full arousal and energy built in your groin area, then often what happens is it, you know, it, it spills out there. But if you learn how to breathe the energy up, how to expand the energy in your body, and you learn what we call ejaculation choice, ejaculation control, semen retention, then you start feeling a lot of experiences through your body, a lot of sensations through your body. And you start having these other, you can call it orgasms, or you can call it other sensations through your body, which is not just the ejaculatory orgasm. And that becomes become like women you become like you, you feel all the sensations you become multi-orgasmic you can also have with your genitals this this experience of ejaculating but without the sem semen coming out so you can have this orgasm without ejaculation and then two minutes later you can have another orgasm without ejaculation now if you ejaculated you would go soft immediately you, you, you would lose your erection and it will take you a little bit of time to get that direction uh, back, what they call the refractory period, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. depending on your age, whether it's <laughs> you know, half an hour or an hour or a day. Um, but if you don't ejaculate, then you contain that energy within your body and you can have this multiple orgasms, which is often, you know, what women, women go through. Um, so I'm super passionate about this, Joshua, to get that out there. And I mean, it's just, this is, we're just touching on one area of sexuality and of love making now, but this is so important for me because very few people know about it. Um, and the one big thing that this does is it extends the period that you make love. And the reason that is so important is that as a man, you're aroused within, you know, two, three minutes and get an erection. But for example, you know, let's talk about women now. It takes them 15, 20 minutes just to heat up, you know, and for them to get into their orgasmic state. So therefore, it's quite important for a guy to last longer. It's not about pressing different buttons and what are the different spots and G-spot. And you know, it's not a technical thing. Just if you can be there and you can make love for longer, then the, your partner goes into an orgasmic state and can seek enough orgasms and and it's not just about the love making that is that is then so much more enjoyable. It's also a deep connection that happens because now it's not just a two three minutes encounter where you look in one corner of the room and see another, and it's two minutes. You know, as opposed to when you have make love for twenty minutes or an hour and you have eye contact. You know, you can just imagine where that takes the relationship. So it's a deep heart connection that happens also. How damaging is porn? to a healthy sex life or is it oh, i think it's very damaging no, i really do believe that um, um you know the thing with porn is that it takes you out of your body into your mind ah you know, yeah. Take, stay, yeah exactly you're going to this whole mind space you know with porn and then you when you're with your woman or your man later on you're actually not with them in the experience. You are now in the movie in your head. So yeah. now instead of feeling each other's bodies and connecting with each other's bodies, you're actually playing a movie in your head of what the porn that you watched. So it takes you out of the, the, the experience that you're in and out of the body experience. Um, and it also is really, really damaging as far as ejaculation is concerned because most of the, you know, the, the porn movies is about the what they call the money shot, you know, the cum yeah, shot, yeah, yeah. you know, the ejaculation shot, you know, and it encourages guys to to come fast. So now you watch porn, you masturbate, self pleasure, uh, and you come in within two minutes, and then you do that every day. Now you're with a real life woman with flesh, not the screen woman. <laughs> 
you're going to come in two minutes. Why would it be different? You know, and that's where the premature ejaculation or coming too early come from. It's, you know, porn is teaching you to run sprints. And then when you're with a woman, you are more running marathons. You know, so now the sprinter goes to this engagement with a woman in a marathon in engagement, but he sprints and two minutes later, he's finished and the woman is waiting for the marathon runner. <laughs> That because makes food. so much sense. I didn't even, yeah. I've met, okay, I've heard all of the, the spiritual, uh, I've heard all of the psychological, I've heard all of these explanations, but you were the first person I've ever heard explain it that way. It makes mm. so much sense. And yeah, I, 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 okay, so I'll just open up and admit this. I mean, I've done it yeah. before, no different now. But like porn has been one of those things that for me, like I do everything in my power to avoid it. Um, sometimes I give in, sometimes I do good, sometimes I give in, like I said. But I notice, I have noticed mm -hmm. and become aware of how it affects me. But for mm -hmm. so long, I used it as a pacifier mm -hmm. because when I was dealing with my sexuality issues, I was using mm -hmm. that as well, since I can't have it in real life, I'm going to go to porn for this. And all that did was make the issue way more complicated than it needed to be. But I also noticed that it affected how I dealt with people, how I communicated with people. It affected my patience. It affected my overall mood like that i've become aware of all of that and that's why i've gotten i've been able to break the habit with the you know because i was doing it a lot for a long time and it's been years since i've been that way but still i used it as this aid to pacify not being able to explore the world that i wanted to explore so i would like to ask you from your experience what would your advice be because there's a lot of men, oh, there's men and women both, and I, but I can only yeah. speak for, for as a man. What would you advise somebody that, you know, they have a sexual desire and they've communicated it with their partner and their partner's cool with it? It's just that it's not really on their priority list as far as making this happen. And whether that's an open relationship, whether that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, being with somebody of the same sex, whatever that's, uh, different fantasies, whatever it may be. What do you advise people that are in a relationship and have a desire, but they're not able to actually explore that desire? What can a person do? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, Thank you. I mean, I think with your partner, and just to get back to the porn thing, maybe a little bit on that, I don't think there's any, so I do with my partner, every now and then we watch a little bit of porn. We say, okay, let's check out what's happening there again. So I'm in a stage of my life where I not, don't think everything is either totally good or totally bad. I think there's a place for everything. Sure. And I think that, that could be a nice way to say, okay, well, let's check something out that to, like that together. Uh, how that would, would that look? And it could be porn, it could be, I mean, a tantra book. It could be more uh, conscious or sacred spirituality, sexuality stuff. Sure. But I think porn could also could also work. Um, and then to yeah, to really maybe feel into that, and then to, to that that's just something that's coming up now. So we do it every now and then. But I tell you, Josh, it, it, it still lasts about ten minutes for us to because then we we get bored with the with the porn because then we rather you know touch each other's bodies the real experience yeah um so i think you know so i think porn, for example can play a role there but i think in the end of the day it's you know it's it's if you can explore that with your partner great if you can't then i suppose you have to make a make a call on that but um yeah i think i think exploring the physical thing in the space of of your agreements would, would, would be great yeah, I, I've 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 learned. I was watching um, a video earlier today that was talking about relationships where 
one of the people are straight and the other person is bisexual or something else and they're finding a way to make it work. So they were talking about the healthy communication around that and how partners can navigate it. And, and I love seeing these conversations because we've, this world is changing where more people are recognizing that maybe they're a little bit more fluid in their sexuality than they originally thought. Now, sure. I don't know how that's happening. I don't know if it's because now people are being more accepted uh, that this is happening. I don't know if it's something in our water, if it's something, if it's the estrogen in our food. I don't know what it is, but things are changing. And there's more and more of these conversations starting to happen that I think need to happen. And I believe that these, these honest conversations can bring healing for a lot of people. Um, yeah. What do you say for people that that are in a relationship and they've kind of now they're starting to go through a, a bit of an awakening for themselves mm -hmm. and they start to realize that they're not really the same. They're not really compatible and it, 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 it sexually, physically, or even what their desires are. But yet they've got children. They're in a committed relate. They were in a committed relationship. But now they've realized that they just want something different sexually, but everything else works for them. What would you advise a couple uh, that, that's in a situation like that? <laughs> well, that's a really tough one. Um, okay, let me answer it directly, not trying to be politically correct or Good. anything like that. You know? Thank it's, you. I believe... And, and once again, you know that that's my uh, my view. So I would put that view forward, but I wouldn't say it's always up to the person to decide what they want to decide. You know, they need to see whether that fits with them. But my view is that for a relationship, you have to have love and sex. For a relationship to last, uh, you have have to have love, sex, and if you could put a romance in, even better. Um, and that you can't have a relationship long term just with sex without love and vice versa. I, I don't believe you you can, I mean, you, you may decide to stay together or maybe uh, not stay together, but then to alternative kind of, to alternative separate relationships or open relating or whatever. But the bottom line for me is actually to, to, to suppress your sexuality in the space. Um, Especially if the one partner doesn't, if both partners doesn't want it, I suppose that's fine. Then it, it continues. I, I think it's still sad because I think having sex and love in a relationship is, is amazing. But I think when there's this disconnect, uh, as, as I understand you correctly, uh, Joshua, where the one wants and the other one, what doesn't, then I think it's kind of the end of the relationship, you know. And I mean, uh, that's, that's just my personal space on it. And unless you can find where you can build. That desire. So I don't think you just call it quits immediately. You can actually go and do some stuff. And uh, the person that doesn't feel a sexual desire can do, you know, there are workshops, there's a lot of stuff that one can do and see whether, depending how much they love each other, whether they want to make it work. And if they can do that, then great. But let's say the bond person is like, nope, I'm not into this. I'm finished with sex in my life. Um, yeah. Then I honestly, my view is if you suppress the sexuality, you, you're denying experience of your life, you know? Are you going to live then for the next 20 years without that sexual expression? Um, you know, you can separate and still have the kids and everything and, and still have a beautiful relationship, a relationship, not necessarily romantic and sexual, but go your way, you know, and have separate relationships. Um, so my, 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 my state of space is that, you know, we on this planet to with bodies, we get to experience life and <laughs> sexuality is a big part of it. So my advice would be not to not to walk away from that, but to to experience that, not to, to lose that gift. Especially if you feel it bubbling up in your system and you feel, wow, I want to express this, then to suppress that would be very sad. Well, because it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. That is <laughs> <laughs> you can just, you can just get try to pray it all you want, but that shit's not going away. It's exactly, you're right, brother. And it's just going to pop up in unhealthy ways or 
different ways. Eventually, you're going to cheat on your partner, or other stuff is going to happen. You know, so hundred percent. You know, it's, you can, you're just you're not gonna because you can't wish it away. And and why would you? You know, I for thirty something years, uh, thir not thirty, yeah, thirty about thirty years, I prayed my sexual, try to pray my sexuality away. It did. Uh, it didn't go. It just got worse. Like it became, it got unhealthy because I was trying to run from it, trying to suppress it. Every time I had a desire, I would shame the shit out of myself. And I'm so fortunate that I have a partner in Jessica that I can be brutally, I can just be honest. Like I can just be mm -hmm. myself and there's no issue. It is so mm -hmm. comfortable and so safe for me that everyone out there that is cheating, that is sneaking around, that's doing all those things, I'm telling you, there is a better way for you. You just got to be honest. I mean, be if you're currently cheating on your wife or your partner, and I mean, that may cause some complications when you tell the truth, but I'm telling you, they're going to find out the truth eventually anyway. Sure. You might as well just tell the truth because if that is really who you are and it's really what you want, honesty will bring you what you want truth in the same way truth will attract your tribe the only way to really get what we want is to be honest about what we want i love that joshua i love that man i love that example of yours no so do you want to stay wanted to stay in like the space where you're not honest and then you don't have this experience or do you want to move into the space of where you are honest and what you have with Jessica now, which is you can be your totally yourself. So that kind of then means for the previous question that you asked is that in some cases that means it's the end of the relationship and that's okay. You know, you can go separate still in life. It doesn't have to be this disaster fight nightmare situation. Um, if you can't be yourself in a relationship, why be in it? You know, hundred um, percent. And another thing too, Here's my experience, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to stereotype women here at all, at all. But I believe this, and I could be wrong. But if you're feeding a woman's love language, if you're giving her love and you're giving her the things that she needs, you would be surprised what they would women would say yes to. Like sure. you would be surprised that they want to become that fantasy woman for you, or they'll they'll role play or they'll play they'll do the things that you want you want a finger in your butt okay you could be honest about it but if you're feeding sure. her love language and she feels loved and she feels safe yep I you got your ride or die right there because i don't believe women are as complicated as men make them out to be at all i mean I they totally have basic agree. needs that we need to fulfill totally agree i think we're much more similar than 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 different i really believe that and being honest and being open. And you know, women love that. If you just open it with them about what you want and you're honest, oh, it's amazing what, you know, but you, you're direct and you're open with it. You don't try to get to it in other ways. Just be open and direct. But also I love what you're saying about love. You know, this guys, if they could see it comes from an open heart and from love, uh, I tell you your woman is open to, to almost everything. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I was gonna ask you, Shoot, I there was an important question too, and it just slipped my mind. Um, it was about oh mercy me, dad No, never mind. I'll come, I'll think of it in a second. Um sure. you have you've you've started something new, right? Don't you have something you're about to launch? Yes, yes. Uh I've got a 21 day uh, uh online course, call it sexual mastery or orgasmic mastery 21 day. It is going out now on 8, 8 November. And oh, Joshua, it's, uh, I've done it two times before. So this is the third round. Um, and it's a guided journey, you know. So we, it's 20 guys. So it's not too big a group. It's only 20 guys or so, 20, 30 max. And uh, it's 21 days of no ejaculation, no watching porn for 21 days. You get videos on a daily basis. Um, and we have our zoom calls four zoom calls the one zoom call before day one and day seven 14 and 21. And then we as group of men come together and you know share in those in those uh, in those circles how it's going with the course what's the difficulties and, and the guys learn from each other so it's a beautiful sharing 
uh, on that basis. And there's a few agreements on that place, like as I say, the, the no ejaculation, the no watching porn, some breathing uh, stuff we do in the morning. You know, you do it independently, but it's, you, you agree, you agree to these agreements, two, three, four agreements. Um, and yeah, no, the, the testimonials that I've had out of that is amazing. The guys are blown away, you know, it's so much more than sexual mastery and, and becoming multi-orgasmic. It's that also, but it's also led to people and their heart connections with their partners going to another level. It's led to men, you know, self-love, you know, it's, learned, you know, you get to learn how to self-pleasure, masturbate, you know, uh, differently, you know, it's just, you, you know, so there are, there are days in the beginning where you, the first week or two, we, we talk about, talk about in the videos that I give through, it's yeah. basically just talking, talking through it. You know, never have to get naked or just to be clear on that or, or self-pleasure or a Zoom call or anything like that. I sometimes <laughs> get that question. So don't worry, it's none, none, none of that. No but circle jerk on Zoom is what you're saying? No, no, I had this question. <laughs> I, had, I had this question the other day and I thought, fuck, I must just make that clear. Uh, so it's not. <laughs> but I'm very clear about, wow, most men know, don't know that you can actually self-pleasure by touching your arm and your face and you don't have to go to the genitals immediately. So, for example, that is in. Um, but there's also a lot about the why, the purpose, and what you want to get out of it. Um, it's also about sexual energy transmutation. How you can use this energy that I'm now building up and use it for areas in your life, for business, for projects. You know, the Think and Grow uh, Rich book of Napoleon yeah. Hill, where he was writing about sexual energy transmutation. We also look at that. So it's, so it's quite wide. What? I w okay, I'm going to ask you something, and I, I'm only asking from my perspective because I used to be in this situation, and I feel that I should ask because, well, this is because I I, 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 I I get messages from people privately, so I know that this is an issue. A lot of men, especially men that are more fluid sexually and uh, like, or they're bisexual or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. they're still masculine. They're, they're masculine, yeah. but they're bi, and they, they enjoy men and women both. But yeah. when it comes to when you're, for me, being, and I, I consider more fluid than the actual label, label of bisexual, but in my experience, when it comes to male bonding, it's always very uncomfortable because of my own insecurities around well, if they know that I'm fluid sexually or I could be attracted to one of them, they may treat me differently and not welcome me and not be part of the tribe because uh, yeah. you're a homo or you're, you know, because of, of the stereotypes that gay men have, bi men have. Sure. What, what, in an environment like this, it's a male group, we're looking for male bonding and it's not sexual but it's about something sexual and sexual transmutation. So I'm going into this environment as somebody that's fluid sexually, that I could be attracted to someone in the group, but I'm not going there to hook up. I'm going there to get well sexually. What does someone, like what can you say to somebody that's interested in being a part of a group like this or any other men's retreat, alpha male group, whatever it may be, that may be sexually fluid or bisexual or to the straight person that may judge somebody that is bisexual coming into the group. What do I, I know I just butchered that question, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. What kind of advice do you have for someone that is not the straight alpha male that's wanting to go be a part of an alpha male group? That is so important. So in my groups, I've had bisexual, fluid, gay guys also in the group, you know, mm -hmm. and I sometimes use the heteronormative language about male and women and woman body different, but I often talk about male, male and male, and that's just not my, I'm very open when I say, guys, I'm not experiencing that, I'm, I'm, I'm quite heterosexual, but I am, I believe gay and bi, and obviously bisexual men, this is huge, huge importance for, and I'm obviously a lot of my friends are gay and, and some of them are fascinated about this and so the circle that you know that's the beauty if you put a lot of men around a circle 
and it's just men and it's you create a safe space for for sharing and vulnerability you'll be astonished about how open the, the guys are so the straight heterosexual guys are super accepting you know yeah so it, it's fascinating so i almost just want to put that message out not to be scared to come to a men's circle like that if you're bisexual or if you full on gay you know and and not even women it doesn't matter it's about sexual mastery sexual mastery is not just making love you know to man women it could be woman woman it could be you know so and the stuff we're talking about in terms of you know ejaculation choice applies as much as making love to a man as with to a woman you know so sure. so i want to just put it out there that you know and i understand the that it, there's sometimes it could be a bit of a fear and a bit of uncomfortableness. How well am I going to be detached there? But in these circles and my circles, definitely not. Everything's welcome and everyone is welcome and whatever other stuff I want to talk about. I always say everything is welcome. Any energy, never mind the sexual orientation, anything else is welcome. You know, this is not just about pure, beautiful roses and love. You know, we, we guys can share anything they want today. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. I I and I bring this up because now I'm like beyond it and don't care, and I really don't join that many groups anyway. But mm -hmm. every men's prayer breakfast, men's Bible studies, men's everything, and then I I I remember sitting in those environments and just hearing people uh, bash homosexuals or bisexuals mm -hmm. and. They make their little comments and I'm going, am I the only one here that is this way? And I'm sitting here listening to this. None of this makes brings me closer to God. None of this helps me understand my identity anymore. None of this makes me feel loved or safe. And yet, and I say don't feel safe. And I'm a menacing guy that could have, you know, wiped the floor with any of them. Not that I want to looking for violence. I'm just, but like when you don't feel safe and don't feel safe does could be under the fear of getting hurt or the fear of mm -hmm. I'm afraid to let people know who I really am because they're going to say shit. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's tougher guys. And then you have athletics and you have locker room talk and you have all of these things mm -hmm. that, you know, that society has set up and I know it's getting better, but there's so many people that live in fear of being honest because of these, men's only groups or women's only groups and if they're a little bit different it's hard to know how do i fit in so a lot of people are not willing to go be a part of these groups even though it would be a huge blessing for them because of fear so i'm grateful that you answer that space but not everybody is like you man like you have you're a special unique individual you really are leonard i i i'm i'm like, but this is why you're back. Like, I'm a fan of you. But not everyone has your attitude. So if someone is looking for a group and maybe they don't know about you, and of mm -hmm. course they will because of this interview, but in other, other interviews you've done, but say somebody that doesn't know who you are and doesn't know that, that your group is safe for them. What are some questions that a man or woman could ask before joining a group like that that would help them feel safe? Uh, I think to, almost those things you mentioned, you know, who's welcome here? Yeah, what are your views on, 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 on that? What type of circle is it? Uh, straight off, I'm, I'm bisexual. I'll, I would, would that be a problem in your circle? Or am I going to get judgments? I'll, I'll be just very direct about it. Um, uh, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. This world we live in. I, I must, I must tell you though, and maybe because I, I suppose a lot of it that I is in the spiritual circles and the tantra circles, yeah. and, and a, I, I tell you, I find very little of that. Honestly, I felt total openness uh, on on any, not just sexual orientation, but but gender flu, flu, fluidity. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, I. I these groups and I find very little prejudice in, in the spaces that I encounter, but I do get it that traditionally speaking, yes, some maybe conservative groups or Bible groups, you may have that, but I would just address it directly. I would say, yeah. listen, all right, man, I'm, I'm a gay guy. Can I, uh, what, uh, how is your circle? Is it, would that, am I going to get judged there or is it 
something that it's uh, that includes it and and does your work also include gay people and you also talk about that can you also add value to that i think yeah. asking the direct questions is super important oh I, I i that's that's the perfect advice i think and, and you know in america is a little bit different we're not as mature about sexuality yet in fact i think that it's gone the opposite direction of maturity um but i i love that answer because that answer being honest is <laughs> the universal answer for everything. If you ask me, um, sure. I, I really do appreciate that answer. I it's because again, there's a lot of people out there that are just feel so alone and they're not, mm -hmm. they don't, mm -hmm. and they don't have to be. And, you know, and it's, there's more, I don't know. I, I, I I'm excited that things are starting to change and look in some respect, the pendulum has swung so far the other way that it looks like it's never coming back. Like there's a level of insanity that has gone on with some of the sexual identity stuff and, and the way that it's heavily marketed and forced in people's faces in America. But that mm -hmm. said, I do think it's getting better. And, um, but it all comes down to truth. So I just, I really love that. Leonard, I, um, I, I always love talking to you. I love your insight. I love your wisdom. I would love it if you could, you know, take the last final moments, plug your new, the new course, uh, plug your website, plug your social media, plug anything you want to promote and any last words you want to share. The floor is yours. Oh, thanks. Thanks brother. Yeah. I think the, maybe to share the link of the, of the course starting soon. Uh, it's, it's open right now and the first zoom call is on 8 november so that's the one thing i'm quite passionate about and and i'm sure the court the the the, the interview would be out uh you know at an apple oh, yeah. for that so yeah so for what's the website just, name pardon what's the website name uh so this leonardlow.com oh okay your personal website my personal okay. website okay. yeah and under the online courses is the the courses lying there but i think if we can put maybe the link straight in the description that's for sure the easiest Okay, um, yeah, so I'll do that. People just to go because it will go straight onto the onto the page of where it actually explains all the detail about the specific course. Because there are quite a few other courses on my website. It'll be nice to get people to, to the straight specific one, which is the 21 day guided one that's okay. starting now. Um, so I think that's super cool. Um, yeah, so I would love to have more uh, guys and especially American guys on my on my on my as international. It's, from Hong Kong to Europe to wherever. I had a few California guys last. Wow. I'd love to have more. Yeah, I'd love to have more. And uh, and uh, yeah, so that's the one course that I really feel passionate about. And it's guided. It's self-study there, but the guided is so much more powerful. So I'm looking forward to put a nice group of guys together. I was in the festivals in Europe now presenting in, uh, in Switzerland, Poland, Amsterdam, and Turkey. Damn. And, um, yeah, yeah, it was was super awesome. And wow. I tell you that a lot of one of the workshops what I was doing was around the three, but one was around this 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 um uh this topic of the ejaculation choice. And there's a few guys that were on the uh in the Geneva part of of, of what's already signed up, you know. So so I could we got a nice international crowd, French, Swiss guys that's on 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 gonna be on the journey with us. So Freaking yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. And it's not even going to be an international circle jerk on Zoom. It's going to be an actual. <laughs> exactly. Sorry. No, but that, that shows my maturity sometimes. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. Life is life. Life is, <laughs> is, is fun. Man, <laughs> I, I'm such a fan, Leonard. I, I'm grateful for the work you do because it, it creates a safe place for people like me to. I mean, I, I'm pretty comfortable being honest <laughs> about where I'm at. But not everybody is, and I. But oh, I know yeah. that if you can make someone like me feel safe, that you can do it for others. And and I don't trust many people, especially in regards to this subject. Um, but you, to me, are one of the good ones. You have an amazing story. Which, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you can watch the last interview I did with Leonard, uh, you, we get into his story. He knows what he's talking about. He's been there. There's no judgment. It's a safe place and he knows what he's talking about and you can learn a lot from him. So I highly recommend you all check out his course on his personal website, which you'll be able to find the link below. 
And Leonard, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time, man. Oh, awesome, Joshua. Thank you, brother. It's always so much fun talking to you. And uh, yeah, wonderful. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And thanks for the beautiful work you, you're doing in these podcasts. It's, it's so cool. Well, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Good luck on your course. Thanks, brother. Uh, bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Yeah. I come and never sleep on me. I some change, so good night, go get what you're looking at. Full night noon, hoodie monk on it, go find your comfort from another, yeah. I go low like undercover, yeah. Wanna know my name, Juji and I'm near and we are poor, but I didn't guess. You can even guess me, cause I'm baby. Hi, Lolo, what's your day? Not like maybe. Yeah, David Lemon, welcome to my palace. Tatiana Ellis, you just keep on wandering. You just keep on wonder, Tatiana Alice, but annoying memory. I just pop a bin, Danny have a bin, not in got a point seven four seven. I get we get ready, like thought they wanna get in late. Jumbi head body, we ain't got a lot of time, man. Wavy night, Jason hit the rock bottom. Eat a body, don't be muddy, do it, yeah, got him, yeah, shot him. More than problems, on the cut, you get a lay, I let now gone, yeah. I'm a change, so good night, go get what you're looking at Full night noon, honey, mong tong it, go find your comfort from another, yeah I go low like undercover, yeah Wanna know my name, Juki and I'm near and we are poor But I didn't guess, you can even guess me Cause I'm baby, hi Lolo, what's your day, not like maybe Yeah, the lemon, welcome to my palace Tatiana Ellis, you just keep on wonder you just keep on wonder, Tatiana Alice, but annoying memory. I just pop a bin, Danny have a bin, not in got a point seven four seven. I get we get ready.